Here's another one. You know, they claim that evolution, uh, a lot of evolutionists will, and a lot of people believe, well, we should be getting better. We're evolving. I mean, whenever you hear the word evolve, it implies you're improving. Now, they'll say, yeah, it could be, it's just changed too, but generally speaking, evolutionists think that we're getting better, yet evidence comes in all the time that we're not. And here's an example. They did a measurement where they, they uh, compare reaction times, and they were able to, they did this uh, over 100 years ago, and then they did it again, and they discovered that our IQ would be 14 points less than our 19th century ancestors. So each generation, sorry, we're getting just a little bit, our, our IQ is going down just a little bit, our, uh, our reaction time. So I gave a talk at a high school about two months ago, whenever I can tell you exactly when I gave that talk, because the next slide is exactly the day. So the day be, this is the day before I gave a talk, 28 April 14th. I'm like, well, I got to add this slide because look what this slide says: Modern humans have become weaklings compared with our ancient ancestors who could outrun and outlift today's top athletes. So more evidence that over time, through generations, that we're not evolving into you know. The mutations slowly, 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 gradually accumulate. I mean, God's blessed us with a DNA system that has a remarkable uh, quality control system. Mutations are very rare. But because we're in a fallen creation, we are slowly, each generation, just very slowly, you know, getting less fit or however you want to call it. Definitely goes against the evolutionary paradigm. Okay, so here's another illustration I wanted to show you. So our chromosomes, as I mentioned, over time, if you go back to Adam 6,000 years ago, just I'm using baseball as an example that just imagine as it gets, as we come to today, we build up a genetic load. We accumulate more mutations over time, slowly. Uh, you know, where, Kate, where did Cain get his uh, wife married his sister, right? A lot of people freak out at that. But the Bible said Adam and, Eve, Adam and Eve had many children. Well, this is Adam and Eve's time, okay? There's no mutations. They could have had, you could marry a sister and not have any genetic problems. So God did not outlaw incest until around this time frame here, you know, Exodus uh, with the law when it was given to Moses. Then he outlawed incest. Remember, Abraham married a half-sister. So when the genetic load got too large... That's when God said, okay, we got to stop having close relations. Okay, so why am I showing you this? There's more to it than that. What's interesting is the, y, the male Y chromosome doesn't change a lot. Each generation, it only takes very, very few changes, okay? Very few. Now, they can use the Y chromosome to, for genetic uh, genealogies and whatnot, but it doesn't change very much. It's, it's pretty robust, so this is a crude example. Again, there is sm some small change. I just want to give you the idea that it's not as, it's conserved more than other, other uh, chromosomes. So what's interesting is across the globe, when you look at the Y chromosome, it's pretty similar among everybody, okay? And, and they, you know, we trace the Y chromosome back to, well, we could say Adam, but really back to Noah, right? There was one Y chromosome on the ark. Noah and his sons, because the Y chromosome only goes from dad to son. That's the only way it goes. Okay, so if you're an evolutionist, you would make a prediction, and they did. So they knew of this. They knew that the Y chromosome was, at least in their, in, in their lingo, lingo, it hasn't changed much in the last, you know, 100 million years. They think it changed a ton in the past. But anyways, we'll get to that. So we would expect it not to be that different in a chimp because they think we're related to a chimp. If this thing doesn't change that much, then it shouldn't have changed that much in a chimp that was related to our supposed common ancestor with the chimp. <clears throat> That's what's expected. That's what evolutionists predict. This is what actually happened. The chimp's Y chromosome is incredibly different. Here's from Science Daily. The results overturned the expectation, the prediction of evolution, that the chimp and human Y chromosomes would be highly similar. Instead, they differ remarkably in their structure and gene content. Here's what the uh, guy who wrote, uh, the scientist who reported on this in Nature magazine. He said that, in this guy is of the Whitehead Institute of Biomedical Research. 
in Cambridge, he said that in the journal Nature, that the human and Y chromosomes are horrendously different than each other. Is that a scientific term? <laughs> Between 30 to 47 percent different. Horrendously is not a scientific term. He said that because it contradicts his worldview of evolution. He continued to say the difference in the MSY gene content in chimpanzee and human is more comparable to the difference in autosomal gene content in chicken and human. Horrendous indeed. <laughs> 